This week we will discuss media effects. You probably would be hard pressed to go out and find someone who can say media have absolutely no effect on individuals or society. Even if an individual didn't think media would have would affect them too much, they would probably be worried about others. It's natural to question media effects on us. We question the effects of lots of things on how individuals and society function. For example, many people think that content glorifying teen uh, pregnancy lead on TV leads to more teen pregnancy or that listening to violent rap music leads to increased crime but these general statements are far too narrow the truth about media effects is that they are far too complicated to unravel this week we'll start to unravel it by discussing these media effects We'll talk this week about the early history of media effects research. By applying a broad view of media effects, we'll be able to better understand how to mitigate those effects. And we'll discuss how specific theories of media effects and what some studies have found. Ever since there were mass media, there have always been some effects. For example, we talked in this class about societal changes that came as a result of the, of the printing press. Media affected public opinion from the very early days, too. For example, publication of the Federalist Papers in the early days of the United States swayed public opinion to encourage the adoption of the Constitution. The book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, helped fuel the abolitionist movement before the Civil War. Around World War I, scientists started to explore media effects, but those early scientists assumed very powerful effects, especially from newer electronic media such as radio and film. Early research took the metaphor of a bullet and suggested that, just like bullets, media messages were simply shot at unsuspecting audiences who could be strongly affected by them. Sometimes this effect was referred to as the hypodermic needle model. I learned that one rather than the bullet effect. So if you hear me say hypodermic needle more than I say magic bullet, it makes sense. Um, and also, if you Google magic bullet, you come up with uh, research about the Kennedy assassination. So uh, I kind of like hypodermic needle better. So. Anyway, uh, it wasn't until World War II that scientific research started to debunk the hypodermic needle model of these strong direct effects. The new era of media effects thinking was that of limited effects, which essentially said that some individuals under some circumstances were directly affected by the mass media, but the effects were not seen on most people and that most people were shielded from those direct effects by some other societal, social, or psychological force. For example, while it might be easy to simply point, out, point to the fact that violent um, criminals may have played a violent video game, it's unlikely that just that factor caused the violence. Other factors such as mental health issues or history of child abuse are likely to lead to such actions as well. Today most social scientists who study media effects take this limited approach where they focus on certain individual differences or social factors that may interplay with certain media messages to have an effect. The important takeaway here is to realize that media do have do not have, I'll start over again, the important takeaway here is to realize that media do not have the same major effects on everyone and that the true effect of media is not quite that simple. One of your readings this week, you were challenged to develop a broad definition of media effects. W. James Potter, the author of the chapter you read, lists a number of different qualities of potential media effects. I want to focus here on just a few. First, it's important to realize that effects may occur immediately after viewing media. They also may be long-term in nature. For example, a TV commercial can make you feel sad right away after viewing it. And that effect probably doesn't last too long. 
if you learn something from a TV program that you remember forever, well, then there's a long-term effect. On the other hand, um, well, I already said that you I experience a long-term effect. What I think is important to realize that this is often uh, the problem. We can see those short-term effects right away, so we focus on the short-term effects because they're easier to notice. Long-term effects are much more gradual and they are often harder to notice. Second, media effects are often thought of as negative. You know, violence on TV causes violence in society, but there may be positive effects also. For example, learning something from a documentary could be a positive effect of media, or the soothing sounds of classical music while you study could be considered positive also. Media effects can also be direct, meaning that they can happen only as a result of media exposure, or indirect, meaning that other factors may play a role. And finally, effects can happen on different levels. We mostly focus on the individual levels, but there can also be effects on groups and societies. We'll talk about these different types of effects on each level in the next couple of slides. Make sure to read about the different characteristics in your readings this week. On the individual level, we often focus on behavioral effects in media. For example, we might see an ad on TV advertising pizza. Then we order a pizza. That's a behavioral effect. But there are other types of effects. Here we'll talk about cognitive, attitudinal, emotional, and physiological. First, there are cognitive effects. This is simply what we know from media messages. This can be as simple as learning the results of an election from watching the news. Cognitive effects can teach more than just facts, however. Scholars have long argued that media portrayals of women, often by very thin models, whose images are often altered, cause girls to have a warped perception of the ideal body. Media can also have attitudinal effects, helping to shape beliefs, opinions, and values. For example, one potential effect of watching years and years of violent crime on TV both on what is highlighted on the news and what is in TV drama shows, many people get the sense that the world is mean and violence and that crime is rampant. This is referred to as the mean world syndrome. The fact is, however, statistics show that crime rates are dropping nationally even though many people think it is going up. Media can also have emotional effects. For example, we might feel scared when we watch a horror movie or feel outraged by reading a mean-spirited post on Facebook. Media can also have long-term emotional effects by desensitizing us to certain types of messages. For example, some scholars have suggested that those who watch a lot of TV violence might come to act less empathetically to violence in real life. And finally, media can have physiological effects. They can affect your body. For example, scholars have found that listening to slow music can lower your heart rate. Also, have you ever watched an action film on the big screen at a theater where it, ha where it appears that the fast-moving vehicle is coming right at you, and as it does, you move to avoid the impact? You might not even realize you moved. Often these physiological responses are involuntary. These different types of effects can occur individually or in connection with one another. For example, certain media messages might teach us some fact that makes us happy and drive us to do some sort of action. So that reaches us on the cognitive, emotional, and behavioral level. Media can also have larger effects on society. For example, some critics have claimed that portrayals of non-traditional divorced families on TV in the latter half of the 20th century was related to an increase in divorce rates. Well, there was probably likely other contributing factors. There are possibilities of some media influences on politics. Scholars have said that increased coverage of political elections, especially on TV, has changed the nature of politics. 
For example, political conventions were once primarily used to choose the candidates. But now they have been transformed into pseudo events that simply advertise the political parties. Politics has also said to have changed because of the visual nature of TV. For example, for example, Richard Nixon famously said that he lost the 1960 election because he didn't look as good on camera as JFK, John F. Kennedy. And um, apparently the first televised appearance, um, those who watched the televised debate thought that Kennedy won and those who wa listened to it on the radio thought that Nixon won. So there might be something about the visual nature of TV that uh, swayed the 1960 election. Uh, other institutions, from religion to journalism, have likely changed, at least in part because of media influence. Though it's hard to specify precisely the changes caused by media, media and not by other forces, media, media certainly has had effects, but specifying those effects is a complex process but as we start to realize the effects and control uh, the effects we can start there and by understanding the complexity it'll help us control the effects as we move forward